One day to Selection Sunday and another ticket to the NCAA Tournament ready to be punched with the Conference USA Championship game. Birmingham, Alabama inside Legacy Arena and a couple of teams not many folks expected to be here. So we welcome you to the Ford Fox Sports 1 College Hoops free tip sponsored by Ford. Go further. It's the sixth seed, Middle Tennessee, trying to win its fourth game in four days. And the four seed, UAB, one of the charter members of this conference, trying to win the conference tournament title for the first time. Middle Tennessee took down Charlotte day one. They then beat the three seed Old Dominion in the quarters before beating the two seed UTEP last night. UAB took down the regular season champ Louisiana Tech in OT to set up this championship matchup. And moments ago, Middle Tennessee head coach Kermit Davis addressed his team. The most desperate team will win. The most desperate team will win. This team doesn't have to do anything different. Just be who you are. We just need more guys to play good in one half. And that's all we're trying to do for the first 20 minutes. Just be ourselves. And all you guys, look, just have fun. But, men play with great energy and just play to who we are, and we'll be fine. All right, men? Here we go. Now, with that, we say welcome courtside. Joe Davis and Mike Jarvis. So two teams that have played the underdog role to get here and now find themselves 40 minutes from the NCAA tournament. What's it going to take to take that final step? Well, I think for uh, Middle Tennessee, uh, they've got to make this a half-court game, control the tempo from the start to the finish. UAB, on the other hand, attack with the bounce, go inside, get to the foul line. They shoot 74% as a team and feed off of this crowd, this yeah. energy, this home court advantage. Yeah, not their home building, but they're in their home city, has hosted this tournament and have fed off it so far in this Conference USA tournament. Your starting lineups, first off, for UAB, one of the youngest teams in the country. Go figure, has a freshman at point guard in Nick Norton and another freshman at forward in William Lee, who threw down a monstrous dunk in the semifinal win last night. That's UAB. Here's Middle Tennessee, team with nine new players this season. That includes the Alabama native Giddy Potts. At guard with Reggie Upshaw, their leading scorer, joined in the front court by Perrin Buford and Jack Rozier. There is Kermit Davis trying to get his team to the NCAA tournament for the second time in three seasons. They went as an at-large team two years ago, their final season in the Sun Belt. For the first time all year, they've won four games in a row, peaking at the right time. So is UAB, which started the season 4-9. But as this young group has grown up and gelled, they've gone 14 and 6 over their last 20. New teams in search of their first tourney title since the 1980s. UAB in Middle Tennessee ready to go. Hungry, 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 both teams. And so, the, so is the crowd. Should be a good one. Mahinti to jump it against Upshaw. It's Middle Tennessee to start with it. Trying to win four games in four days to get their first conference tournament title since 89. And UAB comes out in man-to-man. -man. They'll play mostly man, Joe. And uh, they don't. They try not to switch if they can, but they've got athletic enough parties. They can switch at every position that they have to. Inside, they went to Jack Rozier. Now it's Upshaw getting cut off. Finding Buford, who went for a career-high 29 in a three-overtime loss against UAB two weeks ago down the street at Bartow. Well, I'll tell you what, he's very, very confident o offensively. Uh, he'll shoot it, he'll drive. And, of course, uh, right now, middle up the baskets, which they like to do. They like to go to that 1-3-1 one, one extended zone. Back-to-back -back threes begin the game. This one from Robert Brown, UAB's leading scorer. Well, that's what uh, UAB wants to do. I mean, if they can hit those jump shots, then they'll take uh, Middle Tennessee out of that zone. That's for sure. Well, what a couple of games we watched last night, Coach. These two teams taking down the top two seeds in the tournament. Middle Tennessee started the night by beating the two seed UTEP. And UAB finished it off by beating the top seed Louisiana Tech. The team Baxter getting fouled and a couple of shots come. Well, once again, you know, we talk about tempo, controlling the pace of the game. That's what UAB wants to do. Uh, they're young, very young. Um, <laughs> very young, but uh, they're very, very athletic, and uh, they want to get up and down the floor. 
one of the youngest teams in the country. And in fact, if you're looking at years of experience coming into the season, the third youngest team in the country with just seven years of Division I experience among the group. Haas and the staff have done a great job recruiting, uh, and they've got uh, both these teams have got great character guys, and they represent themselves in Conference USA extremely well. King Baxter quietly last night had a good night. Nine points, nine boards. Overtime win against the Bulldogs. Game they led by 16 in regulation. Louisiana Tech came charging back. Forced overtime, but UAB outscored them 14-4 in the extra session. Watching uh, middle play, you're going to see a lot of ball movement. You're going to see their, their forwards try to take the ball to the basket as much as they can and create mismatches along the way. Jock Rozier. Rebounded by William Lee. They need Jock to get going. Last night he's one for nine. If he could just put one down, I think he'll start shooting like he normally does. Only senior and see significant minutes for this Middle Tennessee team that, like UAB, had to replace four starters from last year. Well, both these teams really like to take you off the bounce. Of course, UAB's got a little bit more of a post-up game, as you saw right there. And uh, they'll go inside, but both teams like to reach off the bounce. How big was Tosin Mahinty last night with a double-double and that win against Louisiana Tech? Especially big during the overtime session. Huge. And, you know, for a young guy to play with the kind of confidence that, that he and poise he played with is really outstanding. And he pops way off the mark. Rozier got his hand on it, couldn't corral it. Brown one on three, pulls it up. And here's Norton. Got it. Nine oh run for the Blazers and a timeout for Middle Tennessee. Getting it done inside and out so far, coach. Well, they, you know, that's, I mean, that's the best way to play basketball. If you can go inside and out, and if you got a play like that you can go into that's got that face-up turnaround game, then that really helps. And of course, you know, to be able to push it up the floor and then extend the defense. And this freshman, I mean, he's not a freshman. I mean, this guy plays with so much poison. You know, talking with Coach Davis before the game, he had mentioned the fact that a lot of these other guys get the publicity. But but it's Norton that really is the glue and holds this team together. He played big minutes in that triple overtime win against Middle Tennessee just two weeks ago at Barstow, Barstow Arena just down the street. UAB swept the regular season meetings January 4th in the conference opener up in Murfreesboro. They won 54-49. And then each team about doubled their total in that second game, 195 two weeks ago. Well, that's not a that's not a typical Middle Tennessee game. They don't want to see that kind of game. Trust me, they'd like to have this game be in the sixes if they could. But the way it's going right now, it could be another one of those high scoring games for UAB. Potts gets fouled. Mm -hmm. And the other Paul thing Norton. that I wanted to mention was that, you know, you've got three baskets uh, by UAB on three assists. Three baskets, three assists, that's always a good sign for a coach. That means they're sharing the basketball. And they have much of the season really balanced output from both of these sides. UAB with seven players averaging more than seven a game. Total Tennessee, seven players averaging more than six. Aaron Buford gets fouled. Tosin Mahinty whistled for his first. Two shots cut. Crowd doesn't like it. It was a little bit of a late whistle, but it was the right call. Definitely on the forearm, which you'll see in the replay. Got him right on the forearm. Got a good crew tonight uh, working this game. Uh, which you always, you always want a good crew, but uh, in these games, boy, every call is important. Steve Olson, Darren George, Jeb Hartness. One more for Buford. Junior from right here in Alabama. Has five early ones for Middle Tennessee. And snaps a 9-0 UAB run. Middle playing man, gone to man. Normally that would have been 1-3-1, but they're afraid of the way that UAB is shooting the basketball early in the game. 
And one of the concerns for Jared Hass is how they would adjust to the way Middle Tennessee likes to change those defenses up throughout the game. Absolutely, especially when you've got a young team. You know, you always want to... Jaquan Raymond finishes on the other end. Yeah, you, you know, when you've got a young team, you know, you, you basically want to try to keep it as simple as you can at the offensive end. And, uh, and on the other end, end of the court, if you're the coach, you want to change it and make those guys think as much as possible. They enter it to Mahinty. Two-man game with Brown. Very impressed with the big guy and his, his, his post moves. Whoever's working with him on that staff's doing a great job. Robert Brown, too strong for the three. Rebound, Perrin Buford. Here comes Middle Tennessee. Buford in the drive. Contested shot is off the mark. Buford got the loose ball. And the whistle. They call a foul on UAB to bring us to our first under 16 timeout. UAB went on a 9 0 run to open up a bit of a gap, but Middle Tennessee has answered it. One of the top defenses in the conference has been especially good during this tournament run. Trying to win four games in four days to win the conference USA championship game. Couple of teams trying to win their first conference tourney title since the 80s, and they both pulled off upsets in the semis to get here. UAB took down the regular season champion Louisiana Tech in overtime by 10. Earlier in the afternoon, it was Middle Tennessee against Utah. A race in a deficit largely because of D.J. Jones and his game-high 17 to get a 53-50 win. Setting up this final matchup. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, both teams played, I mean, incredibly spirited basketball. Uh, they're on, I think both teams are, like, like all the teams in the gym, they're on a mission. And uh, they want to get back to the, the big dance. They're two pretty similar teams across the board, neither with really a headliner. Good balance. Potts puts it in the deck and banks it in for his first point. That's big for them. They need this. Well, Potts needs to get going, and uh, then Jones will even be more of a factor when he comes in the game. But I'll tell you what, uh, you know, both teams, like you said, they're very much alike. They're balanced. There's no superstar. There's just good teams. UAB had scored nine in a row, six straight for Middle Tennessee to answer it, tied the game at nine. Inside a 10 to shoot, Baxter cut off on the baseline. Out high to Norton, three, short. Middle Tennessee, one of the top defenses in the conference, showing it off there. Potts for three, in and out. Rozier the offensive board. Right now, Middle Tennessee is really doing a great job on the boards. I mean, they're going after every single rebound, and they're going to have to do that the whole night. Raymond throws it out of the bench. But that's what they can't do. They can't turn it over. They've got to, they've got to control that basketball. And that's the one thing that they've been doing this, this end of this year. They've, first time this season, they've won four in a row. It's because they're taking great care of the basketball. When we were talking with Kermit Davis prior to the game, he said, look, we shot 36% and beat UTEP because we weren't turning it over. That's right. And against UTEP, if you can control the basketball, you're going to win. You're going to win the games against teams that like the pressure. A couple of subs in for UAB, including Chris Copley, the sixth man of the year in the conference, wearing three in gold. That's going to be good. Florida wouldn't go. Offensive rebound for Madison, and it's ripped down by Rosier. You know, you mentioned it, Joe. These teams are so much alike. I mean, they both attack you just like we saw there. Off the bounce at all five positions. Actually, four out of the five for UAB and all five for, for middle. A 9-0 UAB run answered by an 8-0 middle Tennessee run. There's that bounce. Brown gets fouled. And of course, when you can, when you, as a team, you shoot 74% from the free throw line, you want to take the ball to the basket and try to get fouled because if you get to the foul line 75% of the time, you're going to get points. Yep, best free throw shooting team in Conference USA. Last meeting in that 195 triple overtime win, UAB 
Went 26 of 31 at the line. Well, they're probably mad they missed five. Yeah, you know, right. Because they can really shoot pretty close. Robert Brown had a game high 14 yesterday. And a game winner against Western Kentucky two days ago makes the first. DJ Jones in for the first time for Middle Tennessee, fresh off his 17-point output last night. You know, with 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 UAB, one thing they did last night, I'm looking for them to do a lot tonight, is to play their two-point guards together. And as as the year goes on and you get into conference tournament play into NCAA play, to the ability to play two point guys at the same time is huge. One of these teams will extend its season into the NCAA tournament. Ron Raymond. Upshot, the leading score. Offensive foul away from the ball. I believe they got Jones, and they did with a moving screen. Well, and the little guy, he's about 155 pounds. When he goes down to set a screen, normally they set the best screens. I don't know about that call, but they, they go out and set great screens, little guys do. They used to be in beat up, so they like yeah. to be able to throw their weight around a little bit when they can. Jones is a guy who is hardly seeing any time early on, but a couple of injuries and a dismissal has opened the door for him, and he's taken advantage. Upshaw with a rejection of Washington. Well, the liner and Upshaw, a great athlete, plays really hot all the time. And uh, he can get up. He was a he was a state high jump champ, a uh, long jump champ in high school, probably both, to be honest with you. Uh, but he can really get up, and he gets up quick. He's the leading scorer on the season, but hasn't attempted a shot in this one. Now, you were talking about the little guy, about Jones, and uh, Coach was also saying that when they recruited him, they expected for him to be their starting point guard, but he, did, he, got, he got beat out, and uh, they had a game where they lost. Uh, to Western Kentucky, he told the coach how happy he was for the team to win. Two days later, uh, the, uh, the player ahead of him had a weight fall on his foot, and he got his chance, and guess what? He's made the most of it. Robert Brown connects on another three. And the opportunity that D.J. Jones got that you mentioned came here in Birmingham at UAB when he dropped the three at 24. Well, he loves Birmingham. He shoots about 60% from three-point line when he comes to Birmingham. He's got eight threes in this tournament already. Three-point game inside the 12, first half. Denzel Watts into the game, helping her on the point for UAB. Brown again. Rebound, Darnell Harris. Yeah, you got to make it one shot, and that's it. You can't give the other team more than one. Great ball movement by Middle Tennessee, and then they attack it off the bounce. Upshot with his first points of the game off of the feed from Raymond. That was made with good ball movement first, then the attack, and then all kinds of things happen. UAB in its first championship game since 04, looking for their first tournament title since they were in the Sun Belt in the 80s, and Washington and halfway down and it popped out. Well, they, the UAB did exactly what they wanted to do. They moved it and then threw over the top for an open three. If you can knock those threes down, team can't play 1-3-1 one, one against you. If they go in and out, then the other team can. So look for Middle to stay in that 1-3-1 a little bit longer. Harris hook shot popped out. Here comes Brown in the push for UAB. Robert Brown dumping it baseline. Washington makes it in. I love the feel of this game, though. Don't you, Joe? The, the, I mean, it's just, it's got a real energy and a real, uh, just a great feel to it. I know you were interested to see Tempo. Who does it favor so far? Well, I'll tell you what, it's funny. I mean, the Tempo is a little faster, I think, than Middle Tennessee wants. So I'd have to say so far, UAB, even though they've only got a, you know, three-point lead. Harris for three. Got it. Tied again. When your big guys can step out and make threes, it makes it very difficult for the team to play against them. And, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about not having that maybe that seven-footer. You've got six, seven guys. Those guys, I think, are much more dangerous in college basketball. Now you see Middle going to a little two, two three zone. Kermit's mixing up his defenses a lot more than he used to. I mean, he, he normally would show you 1-3-1, one, one, go to a little 2-3. Now he'll show some straight 2-3 at you as well. And again, this Middle Tennessee defense, which has held teams to an average of 16 points below its season average during the tournament, had UAB working deep into the shot clock. Always, Kermit's teams have always been great defensive teams. 
and this is no exception. There it's walked. That brings us to a timeout. Locked at 16. Already four ties and three lead changes between the six seed Middle Tennessee and the four seed UAB play in front of its home crowd. Feed it off of this home crowd. Trying to win its third game in as many days. Middle Tennessee trying to win its fourth in four days. Winner moves on to the NCAA tournament. Tied for the fourth time. We've had three lead changes in this one already. 16-16 in the Conference USA Championship game between the sixth seed Middle Tennessee and the fourth seed UAB. What stood out to you so far? Well, you know, I'm, I, I'm a little surprised that, that Middle seems right now to be controlling the, the lane, uh, rebounding the basketball, okay, and also keeping UAB from scoring in the paint. UAB, despite beating Louisiana Tech yesterday, gave up 46 paint points. And defending the paint normally has been a strength for them. I'm talking to Jared Hass, he said, yeah, a bit of a concern because they've not seen anybody do that to him this year. Offensive rebound from Madison. He's bumped on the way up and he'll shoot a pair. Well, you know, in these games, like, like Kermit said before the game, be yourself and just be the hungriest team. And that's really what it's going to come down to because both teams can make free throws. So you want to be hungry. You want to get as many shots, as many second chance points as you can. You want to get those 50-50 balls and just, just out hustle and out play the other team. Middle Tennessee has nine new players on this roster this year. Kermit Davis brought in four freshmen and five transfers. They've won four in a row for the first time as they've started to fully buy in and gel over the course of a full season. Well, I've seen this team throughout the year, and I, they just keep getting better and better. This is not his most talented team by any means, but I think it's going to end up being one of his best teams. Has them one win from the NCAA tournament. It'll be their second trip in the last three seasons. They went as an at-large out of the Sundown 2013. Little zone right now by UAB. You're going to see them try to get it in the middle if they can. Got lucky that time. Shot clock down to seven for Rozier, who finds Terrence. Terrence with an extra pass. Shot clock's running out. Raymond barely got it off, and that's a shot clock violation. Yeah, it should also be credited as a turnover to Terrence. He should have known how much time was on the clock. When he got the ball, he had to take the shot or maybe try to get some penetration himself. You've got to be aware of the shot clock. Five Middle Tennessee turnovers for a team playing its fourth game in four days. You were telling me before we got here, and then when we talked with Kermit Davis, he said the same thing. And that is, you think that the, the fatigue thing is an overrated storyline. No doubt about it. I mean, it really is. These guys are too young to be tired. And, uh, you know, when they, when they were playing a couple years ago in high school AAU ball, they played four games in a day. Yeah. So, no, I don't buy that uh, being tired stuff. You said during your coaching days you took a team to Taiwan. You played nine games in nine days. You were at your best on the ninth day. We were. I mean, we were playing marvelous in action, representing the greatest player of all time. And we went over to Taiwan, and on the ninth day, we won the championship. And we played, I mean, with more energy than we did the first day. Kelsey Mahenti with his second bucket. The lead is three. UAB continues to play a little zone, a little 2-3 zone, try to match up as best they can out of it. Look at the hustle from Norton. Jones, good hands to get it. Shot clock collapsing again. Buford a pull-up. Madison boxed out Rozier, who's called for the foul. It's the second of the senior big man, Jack Rozier. Conference USA Championship game in Birmingham. A good one early on. 7.23 left, opening half. The Conference USA Championship game inside Legacy Arena. Birmingham, Alabama, 1916. The four-seed UAB in front of the six-seed Middle Tennessee. Midway through this opening half as Middle Tennessee tries to win four games in four days to make it two appearances in the big dance over the last three years. They went as an at-large in 2013. Last time they won a conference tourney is in the OVC back in 89. Kermit Davis sure has turned this program into something special. Well, he has, and uh, he's done it uh, by by just 
I mean, outworking his team. I mean, uh, early in the year, I spoke to his team, and I said, guys, if you really want to be as good as you can be, you got to work as hard as your coach. He's working harder than you guys right now. And you know what? I think they finally, they're finally working as hard as he is. Norton catching soon. Way off the mark with a three, but Washington tracks it down. Fresh possession. Inside they go, Mahinsey against Upshaw. Madison off the glass. And we talked about rebounding. Timeout, I'm sh timeout right now for middle because uh, Kermit's got to be upset. You've got to box out, guys, if you want to win this game. Five-point UAB lead. Back to Birmingham in 30 seconds. UAB cleaning it up on the offensive glass. Already eight second chance points for the Blazers. They lead by five. Rebounding. I mean, the game's the game is won on the boards and at the foul line. Up until that last flurry down the court, you know, Middle had done a really good job controlling the glass. Uh, they haven't done as good a job controlling the ball as they want to. They've got uh, too many turnovers. Nearly another there. Jones for three. Rebound lead. Not quite the open looks he had last night. They're going to come out and play him. They're not giving him any open looks tonight. Horton stumbles to the floor. Madison finds it and converts with a foul. Well, it looked like Jones had gone away with a foul before that. Anyhow, right here with the knee that wasn't called then he got called so watch this right here gives him the knee he goes down and he says you know what i can get away with fouling ball doesn't lie though right no, it doesn't. yeah second on dj jones joining jack roger middle tennessee players with two fouls tip right. off fresh possession and right now uab's controlling the glass usually if you control the glass you control the game Look for middle to go bigger very soon. Lee. Mr. Basketball in mm -hmm. Alabama last year won a state championship on this floor. The freshman with his first points. A lot of guys, you know, like playing on this floor, I'll tell you. The zone has really bothered middle. Mahinsey with the block. Madison with the loose ball. Numbers for UAB. Brown gets fouled. Defense leading to offense here, Coach Jarvis. Yes, it always does. And uh, Brady is a perfect example. You got those guys attacking that basketball and then out and running. And then, of course, at the end of it, unselfish. Give it up. Get fouled. Go to the foul line. Looks like the officials have given a bench warning to Kermit Davis. He's letting him have it over on the Middle Tennessee sideline. Passionate, intense, Kermit Davis. One more free throw coming for Robert Brown. You know, it's amazing how, how good coaches are at knowing just how far, how far they can push it. Kermit knows the official does not want to call a technical foul against him, so he's going to push it and push it and push it. UAB will stay in that zone. It's given uh, Middle Tennessee a little bit of a problem. Raymond snaps a 10-0 UAB run, and that might get him out of the zone. Well, I don't know if it'll get him out, but it's certainly going to get the guys out a little bit quicker out of it, that's for sure. Now they can go back to their 1-3-1 trap and see if maybe they can turn the, turn the favor over. First steal goal in five minutes for the Raiders. Lead. In and out. Upshaw goes up high for the rebound. Good shot, though. You know, it's a wonder. I'm surprised more teams don't play zone against middle, though, because of how well middle can beat you off the bounce, just like we saw there. And Darnell Harris, who draws the foul and two shots for the junior.
Well, you know, when, when a team, when you bleed, you got to stop the bleed, and the best way to stop it is by hitting the three. Great pass out of the middle, open three, bang. Foul was caught on Tosin Mahenty, his second. First UAB play to be called for two. It's amazing the intensity of this game, and you know, only one player's got, I think, two fouls the most of anybody in the game. And Mahenty will sit down with those two, replaced by Coakley. Good deep benches with both teams. And both, you know, new, new guys. And Middle Tennessee gets a larger percentage of its points from the bench than any team in the country. More than 40% of its points come off of the bench. Only five bench points in this one. Though. Norton throws it away. Tracked down by Lee. They play on. He wants it the most. Hopefully wants it inside. The freshman gets it pinned against the backboard by Rosier. Great weak side defense coming over to help. Raymond left alone. Norton gets the loose ball. Has Brown on the way. He's got a dozen after the goaltender on up show. I'll tell you what, you got to love that freshman. I mean, he, he just, he, he, he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Okay, Norton did. He had that basketball, and boy, great, great pass. And did Raymond take a shot up high? He'll be fine. <laughs> Can't keep him out. Here's that, here's that break led by the super fresh point guy. I think he may have got an elbow, totally inadvertent, but on the way by from Brown. Yep. In this case, the elbow pad that Brown has on might have helped uh, definitely help Jaquan Raymond out. And I'm sort of surprised they haven't gone over to look at the camera because almost, I mean, any time a guy gets hit above the shoulders, I mean, you know, they're going to look and see what, what the play was. I guess that's what we're looking at now. And they'll see the same thing we saw that it's totally inadvertent. Once again, that's how to run the break. Get out, get wide on the lanes, get the ball into the hands of your best passer, and then of course you gotta finish. And then the Okay, you got the pursuit by Middle Tennessee. You know, you had mentioned uh, bench points, Joe, yeah. and, you know, how many bench points they have. One little thing that helps, I think, create that is when you have a lot of different starting lineups, there's a lot of different guys that come off the bench. There was a long time when Upshaw actually was coming off the bench, so that helps your bench score. Yeah, they've had 20 different starting lineups this year. Oh, Kermit Davis is trying to figure things out with nine new players. Upshaw can't hit a three. Copley tracks it down and finds Brown. I think Coach would rather have Upshaw taking these guys off the bounce as opposed to shooting the three. UAB is playing with so much confidence right now, and they're getting the ball inside. They're not finishing as much as they like, but they're getting the ball where they want to. Good look from Lee, the U7, unable to finish. Back comes Middle Tennessee. Darnell Harris buries a three. His second three ball, he's got eight to lead Middle Tennessee, back to a five-point game. Now, Donald Harris is a 40, he shoots like 43% from three on the year, and he can really shoot the back. Look out for Madison, off of the feed from Watts. Well, if we see the replay on that, you're going to see a great screen uh, uh, set on the weak side to free, that, free the man up for that lob dunk. Same zone as UAB. And rightfully so. It's really taken middle out of the things that they like to do, which is put it on the ground and beat you off the bounce. The UAB once again has his hometown crowd jacked up with a seven-point lead. 
Last night it was William Lee on an alley oop that really got this place and going. And this is set up. Watch the weak side of the floor. That screen that was set, okay, set that dunk up. Sometimes you get an assist with a good, good screen. Watching that one after this one finishes up later tonight. 31-24 UAB in front of Middle Tennessee. And had a good one ready for you in the garden. Xavier trying to pull the upset against top-seeded, fourth-ranked Villanova, trying to secure a one seed in the big dance. Well, I'll tell you what, Xavier, I remember them from the uh, A-10 days when we used to coach against them when I was at GW, and they've come into the league, and they've done a great job. And, of course, Jay Wright, uh, you know, up for possible coach of the year, and Villanova up for possible one seed in the NCAA tournament. Out of the timeout, Jaquan Raymond still... Struggling to get into rhythm. Been a rough shooting tournament for him. It has. They ran a nice, nice play for him. There's Cookley, another freshman for this UAB squad. Well, they've got, they're just going inside right now. Middle's playing behind in the post, and they're taking advantage of it. Three of the top five scorers for this UAB team are freshmen. They call up Shaw for the travel. We've got three freshmen, four sophomores in the rotation, only two upperclassmen to see time. Coach Davis is getting on his guys a little bit, talking about they need to run their stuff. A little bit out of character right now for middle. Trying to get it back a little too soon. This is where you got to get it back with the defensive end. One stop at a time. Washington lost it out of bounds. On to the second UAB turnover. A couple of subs into the game. Giddy Potts comes back in, replacing Marcus Terrence. Some pressure from UAB. The Middle Tennessee easily breaks. Raymond going baseline. Upshaw loses it. Seven Middle Tennessee turnovers already. Yeah, too many. And, and this is how they were playing early in the year. When they weren't winning, they were turning the ball over. They had stopped that. They got to they got to slow down a little bit right now. I think they're playing a little bit faster than than they want. UAB has, has sped them up. Kermit Davis takes Raymond out, brings DJ Jones in. Jones had 17 to lead the way last night. Hasn't scored this one yet. Lots of clean luck. And the three. Well, Coach Davis talked about the fact that they had to control the dribble of UAB because if you don't control the dribble, it leads to kickouts for open threes. Jones got stripped. Watts on the push. Denzel Watts getting blocked by Buford. And then a foul. And it goes on UAB. Once again, the dribble isn't always designed for the score. And sometimes, most of the time, it's designed for that. The kick out and the open three. Now, Kermit just gone on Little Jones. Okay, for dribbling with the idea of trying to go in the score. I mean, you're 5'10". You're not going in the lane today and getting many layups, guys. He did his damage last night from outside. Did his damage against UAB the first time around from outside as well. Madison knocked it out of bounds. Inside of a minute in this first half, but he'll stay on this end. UAB is doing a great job of denying the, the, the forwards from Middle Tennessee. Normally, they allow those guys to get those handoffs. They're doing a great job extending out the defense and taking away those handoffs because those handoffs lead to drives. Jared Haas, third season as head coach of the Blazers, trying to get them to the NCAA tournament for the first time in his tenure. For the first time since 2011 for this program. Roger has it indeed. In a crowd, gets blocked by Copeland. Well, you know, the difference right now in the post defense is UAB can play behind because they're bigger. So they figure it's just to stay between you and the basket, and then, of course, they can block shots like that. Ten to shoot. Five to shoot. Edward Simpson out to Buford, fading, hitting to beat the shot clock and snap a 7-0 blazer run. I'll tell you what, uh, that young man uh, offensively 
Uh, he can play with anybody because he can shoot that mid-range, hit the three, drive it. The thing that's got him in trouble sometime this year is the fact that uh, he hasn't played quite the defense that Coach wanted him to. Great right door oh. and a foul of 1.9. Two free throws for C.J. Washington. Great execution. You know, anytime you can go through the middle of the defense, get the ball into the post, it sets up possible cutters, as you see right there. A little backdoor action by the weak side cutter. They call up Shaw for his second foul, yeah. Mike. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because what happens a lot of times is the defensive players have a tendency to watch the ball. Once you take a look at the ball, peek at the ball, then you lose your man, and that's what sets up the back door. C.J. Washington, a guy that was the second leading scorer for this UAB team last year, but his influx of freshman talent has let him take a smaller role. One of two at 1.9. Upshaw turns and is off the mark. So this first half comes to a close with UAB up by 11. UAB head coach Jared Haas standing by with us. Coach, this is a Middle Tennessee team. It's been one of the best in the conference defensively all year. How have you guys been able to have success through 20 minutes? Well, first of all, it looks like two teams playing for a championship right now. Both teams are playing hard. We've mixed up a little bit of zone and some man. We're trying to challenge every shot, which I think we've been good with. Uh, our box outs have not been where they need to be. We need to be a little bit more physical with that. Well, Coach, you went to that 2-3 zone. Seemed to make a pretty good, much much of a difference. Uh, yeah, it, it did. You know, we're not going to hold them scoreless in it, but they did make a couple shots and got a couple things. One time in transition, we didn't get to our spots properly, but uh, hopefully changing it up a little bit can be effective. Coach, we appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. That's Jared Haas. He played for Roy Williams at Kansas in the mid-90s. Made 12 trips to the NCAA tournament under Roy as an assistant in both Kansas and North Carolina. Now trying to make his first trip as the head man and his team up 11. As we head to the halftime break, we'll get you to L.A. on the other side of this break and be back to Birmingham for the second in just a bit. USA Tournament has provided excellent finish after excellent finish. Great work by our crew putting together the images of this tourney. One half to decide a champion. 11-point lead for UAB. Kermit Davis's Middle Tennessee team having some issues with turnovers, and we talked to him about it a moment ago. Well, it's not even close who the most physical team in the gym is, and we just went absolutely crazy offensively. We reverted back to where we were about nine weeks ago. Just tried to go make plays on our own. Just quick shot three. The whole difference, UAB lived in the paint. We couldn't get any paint touches at all. Coach, what's the one thing that you want to see your team do these first four minutes of this half? Oh, we, we just got to gain our identity again, Mike. We got to move the ball and get paint touches. And they just, I mean, it was just, I mean, like grown men just going over the top of guys and just rebounding the ball. And that's one thing we've done down the stretch lately. Coach, we appreciate the time. Good luck. Thanks, guys. They trailed at halftime in round one on Wednesday. The win against Charlotte. They trailed by seven in the second half in the win against Old Dominion in the quarters. They trailed by ten last night before coming from behind to beat UTEP. And they come from behind again to get to the NCAA tournament. Well, early in the year, Joe, I would have said no. But after the last couple of days, I'd say certainly they can. The one word I heard, basically, are the two words, man up. They got a man up. Inside they go, Mahinti. Too strong. Rebound, Pops. 
And they've got to limit UAB to one shot. One shot now. And then right now they need three stops, four stops in a row, a couple of baskets, and it's a new ball game. Yeah, so there were the eight turnovers that led to 10 points. Then there were eight offensive rebounds for the Blazers that led to another 10 UAB points. They could just as easily be down 16-17. Aaron Buford knocks down a jumper and nine for him to lead Middle Tennessee. Now the difference there, you could see they had their patience. They were poised. UAB looked like they might have backed off a little great pass. Okay, by Norton. That little guy, I tell you what, he sees everything. Saw his classmate William Lee. Boy, do they have a bright future with this UAB program. Freshman hooking up with freshman for UAB's first bucket of the set. Upshaw got it over the trap. Absolutely. Buford will head to the line. UAB has thrown several alley hoops in this journey. And many of them by this little guy who just sees everything. He, he sees the whole floor. He knows what he's going to do, I think, before he even touches the basketball. Nick Norton, his dad is the head coach of the women's team here at UAB. Randy Norton played his high school ball in Bloomington, Illinois, did Nick. At Central Catholic, won a state championship last year. Jared Haas said that was the first time he watched him play. Fell in love with him with that 25-point performance in the state title win. Well, you know what? you got to fall in love with it, with guys that are, that, that are as confident, that he just makes the simple pass. There's nothing fancy about his game. He's a guy that's going to help you win a lot of basketball games. Robert Brown, leading scorer for UAB so far. And a foul called on Rozier on the entry. That's his third. Two minutes into the second half. That's the one place from, you know, you, you never want to allow the ball to be passed into the post from the middle of the floor. And if you're playing good defense on the top side, that should never happen. So they've got to sit Jack Rozier, their only senior contributor. Two minutes into the second half with his three fouls. And that hurts a lot. Upshaw, good extension to tip it out. Got one team that's incredibly young, the UAB, and another team that coming into this year is incredibly new. Nine new players on this Middle Tennessee team. Both of these teams have gelled throughout the season. And peaking at the right time. Baxter kicks. Lee rises and hits. Awfully tough to defend that shot. <laughs> well, obviously, to take care of the basketball, Kermis decided early he's going to go with, with, with two guards, basically two point guards. This is the way Middle likes to play. Move the ball and then try to attack off the dribble. Which Jones does and gets fouled by Brown, his second of the second half. So DJ Jones, who had a game-high 17 yesterday, heads to the line looking for his first points of this one. Though he only had two at halftime yesterday and then one off in the second. If you had to give him one, one word to describe him, what would it be? Hmm. Intense. Okay. You know what I would I would say fearless. Yeah, he is fearless, this kid. Well, tomorrow, Katie Nolan brings her fresh perspective on the world of sports, gives an unfiltered take on the week's headlines. Smart, funny, irreverent. Unlike anything you've ever seen, it's garbage time with Katie Nolan, and it premieres tomorrow at 9:30 Eastern, right after the Timbers Galaxy game, right here on Fox Sports One. Jones with his first two points. I don't get him started. It doesn't make him his highest score. I just want to see that ball go through the net. At 24, when these teams met up two weeks ago, had 17 last night. A little full court pressure here. Tough team to press though, because they're going to just they're going to they're going to take it to the basket off the bounce. A lot of guys that can handle it. And he got him a hit the inside. Both teams very similar. In terms of you know style, way they like to play. Lee feeling it and wind up. 
for a guy that won a high school championship in this building last year. And you tell me that doesn't make a difference. It does. Jones got hey. fouled and buried a three. Here he goes again. <laughs> now they say he's 5'10". He looks like he's about 5'8". But I tell you what, he stands about 6'8 inside. He's a tough little guy. Out of where? Chicago, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Inner city. I think together we got it about right. Watching that play and that reaction. Intense. Fearless. Yeah, amen. His first name is Intense. And his middle name is Fearless. And we'll find that his last name is Jones. And he's got six in a row for Middle Tennessee. The first six of the game for him. They called Norton for his second foul. Well, that got it down under that psychological number. But now you you got a nine-point game. Nice pass. Off the iron with a slam. Into the hands of Jones. D.J. Jones starting to feel it for Middle Tennessee. Amazing how games can turn. A couple of plays started with a couple of free throws by Jones. Simpson fades. Well shot. Last touch by Middle. UAB takes it. Inside of 16 minutes in his second half. An intense game. You can feel that uh, there's a spot to the tournament up for grabs in this one. Just like yesterday, D.J. Jones getting it going in the second half. Had 15 of his 17 after the break yesterday. All six have come since the break today. Jared Haas trying to coach his Blazers into the NCAA tournament. 15.47 left in the Conference USA Championship game, and we look at our AT&T Fast Analysis. Our stats so far, the difference in this game, UAB has converted eight turnovers from Middle Tennessee into 10 points and eight offensive rebounds into 10 more. And UAB has done a great job taking care of the basketball. they got a plus 10 assist to turnovers. Some pressure from Middle Tennessee out of the timeout, and it causes a turnover as Lee throws it away with the pressure from Upshaw. Well, this is a team that can be pressed. Uh, you know, they, they, they could eat, probably have 25, 26 wins if they could take care of the basketball just a little bit better. And, you know, so Middle Tennessee said, you know what, we're here to win this game. We're going we're gonna to come out, we're going to press more, pick it up full court. And it's really making a difference. Remember, we talked about Middle Tennessee's ability to come from behind. They trailed by seven in the quarters against Old Dominion, one. Trailed by ten in the semis yesterday against the two-seed UTEP, one. And UAB last night blew a 16-point second-half lead, largely because of the pressure that Louisiana Tech put on before winning that game in OT. Absolutely. And uh, I think the best way to press UAB is man-to-man, -man, full court, because their guys are basically tear up that zone if you're pressing the zone. How about with William Lee going straight off with the defense on Buford? Wow. He's long. Sorry about it. The seven-foot wing stand. Norton short with a three, pops the board. This two-guard lineup, I think, has really helped to make a difference also. It's really settled uh, Middle Tennessee down. Upshaw's been quiet. Their leading score, 30 in gray, only two points. They've done a real good job on Upshaw. Jones lost it. Picked up by Madison. You don't want to foul here. The foul from Ray moves the freshman into double figures. You know, you, you mentioned the word freshman. By this, by this time, actually after January 1st, I don't consider any freshman a freshman anymore. These guys have now played over 30 basketball games. They're, they're veterans of the war. Pots a clean look. Another guy that is technically a freshman, but yeah. you say no more. No more. No more, brother. Nice execution that time. Ran a nice uh, baseline, some baseline screen action. Always good. Good stuff. Raiders getting it going from outside. They've knocked down six threes. Back to an eight-point game. Copley got great position against Upshaw and drew the foul. That's the third on Reggie Upshaw. Yeah. 
turnover leads to what? Leads to points. Follow up. And of course, the once again, nice execution there. They ran uh, parts off of some couple of baseline screens, and Jones delivered for the three pointer. Patience time here for, uh, for both teams, really. This is where, uh, if you're middle, you want to just let your defense continue to keep you or get you back in the game. You're only down eight. Making okay. that one of two. Middle Tennessee trying to win four games in as many days to get its first conference tournament title since 1989. The OBC trying to make it two appearances in the big dance in three seasons. You know, the way that UAB is overextending, overextending, I mean, they're, they're, I think they're setting themselves up for a backdoor. Middle Tennessee's got to look, start looking for some more backdoor. Raymond, an aggressive take, and a foul caught on the Blazers. They get Madison for his second. So they take the ball to the basket. We'll see here. Okay, on, on this particular play here, he's going to drive. Look like he faked the charge to me. If we, get, if we get another look, which we're getting right now, look at the defender. It looks like he's backing away. He didn't take it in the chest. If he had just stayed there, took it, then he might have got the call. So you agree with it? I agree with the call. Guy don't take that. If guy doesn't take the charge, he's straight on. He, doesn't, he shouldn't get it. UAB is in the championship game for the first time since 04. They've not won a conference tournament title since 1987. They're in the Sun Belt. Last NCAA trip 2011 as an at-large. Both teams trying to take you off the bounds with or without the screen. And then see if they can make something happen for a guy in the perimeter. Brown, next down on the three. Perfect example right there of good ball movement, dribble penetration, guys spotting up for threes. Big time in the game for middle. Got a hold, got a hold serve right here, brother. Harris leaves it short. Not Watch the rebound. Right. Not the shot that Kermit wanted, that's for sure. Coakley. Might be time for a timeout here. The crowd is in it. The players from UAB are feeling it. Timeout. Thirteen point Blazer lead. First it was a three ball. On the corner from Brown has now got 15. Then they went inside. Right, and obviously, on both cases, they went inside. The first time with the dribble, second time with the pass. The four seed, UAB, 12-36 from the NCAA tournament with its largest lead of the game at 13. On the number six seed, Middle Tennessee. Blazers in the championship game for the first time since 04. Looking for their first NCAA tournament appearance since that at-large bid, at bid in 2011. They've never won a CUSA tournament. Last conference tournament win is in 87. Well, if they're ever going to win one, it's today with this home crowd. That's a huge advantage, as we spoke about before. You can feel it, and I think the players are feeding off of it. Rozier and Upshaw, both in the game with three fouls for Middle Tennessee. This foul goes on UAB. Uh, Denzel Watts. I think that was the right call. I think Watts right now, a little bit of acting. Close, though. Fifth foul on UAB to just two on Middle Tennessee in the second half. can shoot it. He can shoot it. They're getting out real quick, though. Closing out really well on the shooters out of the zone. They're quick. They're long. 
I don't know how much zone they played during the regular season, but it certainly looks like it's good defense for them, just like you saw right there, contesting that three-point shot. Unable to penetrate that zone and then settled for a long three. Inside of 12 minutes, 13-point UAB lead. with his first points of the game to quiet the crowd. Middle Tennessee needed that. They really did. And uh, right now, if you're Middle Tennessee, the first thing you want to do is see if you can get it under 10. Psychological. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I've, I've always believed that 10 is still a, a magic number in, in a lot of things. You know, you want to get 10 out of 10 on the paper. You want to get it under 10 if you're down in the game. Watts is left alone. He is Everything going right for you. They're shooting it, boy. Raymond drives, adjusted midair, and finished. Nice finish. So UAB, can they protect this lead? They got it to 16, the same mark they extended it to before blowing the lead yesterday against Louisiana Tech. And it was right about this time also. Copley baseline against that shot. Right now, UAB is basically playing with just that much more pizzazz, I think. John Coakley for the foul. We head to a break. These teams both heating up. But UAB right now feeling it. Up 16. It's largest lead of the game. 944 from the NCAA tournament. Back to the Magic City. After this. The four seed UAB with a 16 point lead. It is its largest as they try to win a conference tournament for the first time. They're a charter member of Conference USA, but have never won a tourney. Joe Davis and Mike Jarvis, just about everything is going right for them right now. You know, this is almost like boys to men. Yeah. I mean, we're watching boys become men. Well, right now, UAB has got a plus 13 in the assist to turnover column, a plus 9 on the rebounds. And you know what? I, my my numbers tell me they should be up 20 plus points. Huh? You got so an equation? I got an equation. Yeah. It's usually pretty good. Thomas Law. So let's flip it around. Middle Tennessee, which has a race deficit after yes. deficit in this tournament, within 15, 9:44 to go. How do they pull off the comeback again? Well, I think they extend, 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 pick them up full court, but they got to make consecutive stops. This is the point in the game where they probably need three, four, five stops in a row to have a chance to win this game. And defense has defined them all season. Well, UAB lately has been making it look easy on this end of the floor. They've done a great job today. I mean, when you think about 16 assists to three turnovers, I mean, any team in the country would be happy with those numbers. They've around 70% since the break. Absolutely. And you're playing against one of the better defensive teams. Great execution. They call it offensive foul. Wow. On Washington. Looked like he got his shirt pulled. Well, those are the kinds of plays. Uh, he did get his shirt pulled, but then ran over somebody. <laughs> yeah. so. so it's a matter of what you see. Yeah. Referee didn't see the shirt being pulled. That's the seventh on UAB, so Middle Tennessee out of the bonus. 9-17 left. Joe, I just always tell my kids, at some point in the game, you got to make three stops in a row. And this is one of those times in the game for Middle. They could get three stops in a row and score two or three of those times. Yeah, they could turn this into a game again. Buford. Rozier. That's one way to start, getting those offensive rebounds. 
and take it at the big guy. And he gets fouled by Mahinti as one of the things Kermit Davis talked to us about during halftime is get more paint touches. Well, you know what? Get more paint touches and get more, get into the rim. And I, I don't care how big a guy he is, attack him. Go at him. Go at his numbers. Big guys want to block shots. You know what? They'll foul you. Tomorrow, NASCAR heads to Phoenix. Kevin Harvick trying to defend his title, follow up his Vegas win with a second straight checkered flag. It all starts at 3 Eastern. Sprint Cup racing from Phoenix on Fox. Got to make your free throws, though. And both teams good free throw shooting teams. But then again, you know what? Shooting free throws during the regular season, a little bit different conference uh, tournament, and also even much more different than the NCAA. Rip to the NCAA tournament on the line in this one. Automatic bid goes to the winner. A little double team action. That, open, that, however, opens up other things. That's the only thing. I think right now you stay man for man and you deny, you deny, you deny. The double teams will open up things, especially for the home team. It's only the third team foul on Middle Tennessee since the break. Still plenty to give as Brown gets ready to inbound. The problem with playing against a team like UAB that shoots it so well at the free throw line is normally you say, okay, we might stop foul, and this is the team you don't want to foul. Top free throw shooting team in the conference. Watts turn the corner on Jones. Not a lot of help when you're when you're out denying. That's the only thing, and they have no choice right now. They've got to really try to deny everybody the ball, but it just opens up possible driving lanes. Now Watts tipped it away from Jones. Go back to that last bucket. Right here, you got that drive. You got to come over and help a little bit more, Buford. Kermit Davis takes DJ Jones out. Going for a little bit bigger lineup right now. A little bit more of a driving lineup. Aaron Buford hops inside, gets blocked by Mahinty, but a foul going on the Blazers. They call Washington for his second, eighth, and make that ninth team foul. So a timeout, 7.45 left in a 16 point game. Uptown Birmingham, a couple of blocks from here at the BJCC. UAB with a 16-point lead with 7.45 left, and boy, have they got hot from outside. Well, they did. It started, though, with good dribble penetration. There you see uh, Norton knocking it down, and Brown, you know, filling it up, uh, feeling good. And But once again, notice the penetration, most of the time setting that up, and then Brown again. And uh, this team here is tough enough to play. When they're hitting threes, like they are hitting them tonight, then, uh, you know, it just makes them that much more tough. I, I, if, if they win, they're going to win this game, I don't want to be a team that's got to play UAB in the first mm. round of the NCAA tournament. I really don't. A lot don't. of talent. And if Middle Tennessee has any chance at all, they're going to have to start hitting some free throws. And miss six of them this afternoon. One of two for Buford. They try to beat the pressure with Brown. Great execution. Team is playing Lucy Lucy. Timeout Kermit Davis. The UAB has hit eight consecutive shots against one of the top defensive teams in Conference USA, and the latest beautifully designed easy for Robert Brown, who's got 20 to lead all scores. Back in Birmingham inside of eight minutes in the Conference USA Championship game. Joe Davis, Mike Jarvis, the four seed UAB, with a 17 point lead in the six seed Middle Tennessee. 
UAB went back to this 2-3 zone. They're really doing a great job coming out on shooters, switching on screens. UAB looking to push. It's lost. Foul on the floor. Goes on middle. Watts did a great job attacking, getting his body into the defender, drawing that foul. Potts and Harris to check in. Replacing Rozier and Terrence. for such a young group of players. Robert Brown fouled. Yeah, three freshmen, four sophomores in the rotation. Brown is one of only two upperclassmen that see time for Jared Hass's team. What a day for Brown. Led the way with 14 yesterday. Game winner against Western Kentucky in the quarter. 21 to lead all scores in this one. They've fed off this crowd once again, trying to win their 12th in a row in the city of Birmingham. You know, there are certain buildings, there are certain places where you just feel invincible, and I think this happens to be one of those places for this UAB team. Maybe they could get an, uh, an NCAA game yeah. here. They've played them here before. Won't this year, but this building has hosted NCAA tournaments prior. Upshaw has been quiet, well short. Now, if you're wondering why this tournament's being played here and not in Ruston at the top seed Louisiana Tech's home floor. It's because the way Conference USA does it is schools and towns bid on hosting the tournaments. Birmingham won the bid. Yeah, and they've taken full advantage of it. Yes, they have. And it's actually great for the league to have it, to have it here because of the fact and the atmosphere. There's nothing worse than watching a tournament game with, you know, just a few people in the stand. So this is actually great for the league, the conference will say. Hakeem Baxter knocks down the ninth UAB three. Wow. Now Baxter with a steal. And Watts getting rejected by Raymond. 22-point lead for UAB, largest of the game. You're going to get five five-man substitution here. Well, one thing about Kermit, the game is not going to ever be over as far as that coach is concerned. Okay, he's going to keep coaching and coaching and fighting and fighting. Here, okay, Kelly points the teams down. Trying to lob it to lead off of the inbound play. And track down in the corner. The thing that's really been so impressive to me, Joe, is just how well uh, UAB has defended the dribble. They've done a great job all night, whether in man or zone, defending the dribble. Three from Terrence. Marcus Terrence with his second three ball. Right about now, you almost got to shut him out if you're Middle Tennessee. Game's not over. Well, UAB went the final 526 of the semifinal without a point. Blowing that 16-point lead against Louisiana Tech yesterday. A hit Can't step it down. Into the hands of Jones. That's the second dunk he missed. Uh, he might want to think about just going up and laying it off the glass. Everything's not a dunk. That's no fun, no. No, but hey, listen, it, you just you want to win this game. Forget about uh, you know how it looks. Get no points for style. And plus, if you go up and use the backboard, you can go up to 12 feet high instead of just 10 where the rim is. It's tough telling young guys to do that though, especially when they can jump like he can. Simpson. Need those. First shot that the freshman from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, is taken. Oh, 
I think I, one of the things I love about doing games, you get a chance to talk about little things like Mahinti going up and using the glass because players will listen. And a lot of times they might do things that their own coach, you know, they, they don't always do what the coach tells them, but they might do if they hear from somebody else. So I hope he hears me on yeah. that. Norton splitting the double, slipping it to Mahinti. And a cross court stolen by Roger. I'm sure Coach Haas doesn't mind too much that pass because once again they're trying to make the extra one. Here's Phillips. Fresh into the game, missing his first shot. UAB has thoroughly dominated this second half. The crowd rises in appreciation. UAB trying to win its first conference tournament title as a member of Conference USA. Of course, it was dominated by Memphis 2006 through 2009. They won four in a row before Houston beat Utah for the 2010 title, broke up that Memphis run. And then the Tigers came back and won three straight on their way out of the league. Tulsa winning the title last year in their final season of the conference, beating Louisiana Tech. We'll have another new champion this year. And with 337 left, sure looks like it'll be UAB. Well, I tell you what, it'll take a miracle for it not to be UAB. But uh, one thing I know for sure, Middle's not going to stop. Kermit's not going to let them stop. He's going to try to win this game. UAB has shot above 70% in the second half against the top defensive team during this tournament, Middle Tennessee, one of the top defensive teams in the conference all season. Well, it just goes to show you how well they're playing. I mean, to do this against Middle Tennessee means you are really, really playing well. William Lee knocks down the baseline jumper. This might, I, I tell you what, I can't believe that they've played a better game all around oh, in this game this year. What a great time to play it, play your best. Jones. Fight for the rebound, pulled out by Norton. Jones up for the steal. The little man takes it hard to the rim and right off the glass. 5'10", uh, you think that's true? No, he's about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, but I'll tell you what, he plays big. I'd love to have him on my team. Both of these point guards, I'll tell you, they're really, really good. Norton, I mean, is a, I think is a special player, a little bit different than Jones, but both of them are going to win a lot of basketball games during their college career. Just that simple pass there, that simple bounce pass to set up that jump shot, and you got your big guy that can step out and make jump shots. You're a pretty good basketball team. My goodness, UAB just not missing. No, they're not. They put 11 of their last 12 from the field. <laughs> the Big East Tournament, presented by New York Life, will conclude tonight with a championship game. It'll be Xavier, which beat Georgetown for the third time this season last night in the semis. And number four, Villanova, which hasn't lost since January. They survived against Providence in the semis last night. All right here on Fox Sports 1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. 7 Eastern. Georgia. 7 o'clock, Musketeers and the Cats. You think Villanova's worthy of a one? I do. I do. Uh, they have, I mean, they've just been ripping everybody. And, uh, you know, they've got, like I said, they got one of the best coaches in the country. Definitely worth, worth a one. No, no doubt about it. And uh, since Jared Haas took over, we watched the Blazers committed to a cure initiative. You see the different shoes. They were inspired by something they saw on a trip to Spain during the summer. And we thought it was a good way to, to be able to salute kids battling illnesses, including Elijah Sarah, a kid that they've, for lack of a better term adopted since they've taken over sitting in k5 hiding right now there he is there he is he's battling brain cancer has gone through 17 surgeries jared has in his program is 
taking him in. He's one of their own. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, for pediatric cancer research, uh, I, I just think that, you know, they, I know they invited, uh, invited a lot of teams to participate in that activity, wearing the, uh, the two different shoes. And uh, it seems to be catching on and uh, for a great cause, for a great young man. Jock Rozier finishes with a foul. He'll have a free throw to the other side. Washington coming in. Placing Lee. We will get our final media timeout. Jared Hass's team minutes away from shocking the world and winning the Conference USA Tournament for the first time in program history. Two minutes, four seconds from a Conference USA title and a trip to the NCAA Tournament for the four seed UAB, which Mike started the season four and nine, 14 and six over the last 20 games. And now two minutes, the first trip to the tournament since 2011. I'll tell you what, like I said, they've gone from being boys to men. You know, I look at their schedule, top early schedule. I look at the, the fact that they lost, a, uh, you know, more games than probably this team should have. A lot of close games. They could just easily have 25 wins. This is an excellent basketball team. Well coached. And uh, like I said, I would not want to have to play them in the first round of the tournament. What do you think they wind up? 13? Well, neighborhood? Yeah, I, I mean, probably only because they didn't win the league. Uh, maybe, maybe 12, but... And if they're 12, that's good because 12's always oh, up yeah. fives anyhow. I remember me and the GW being a 12 and ended up playing the Michigan Fab Five in the Sweet 16. So I wouldn't mind being a 12. Terrence knocks down a three, and of course, coming into the tournament, folks were hopeful that Old Dominion could make a bit of a run. They were on the bubble, as was Louisiana Tech. And Old Dominion bound out in the opening game of this tournament. And Louisiana Tech losing last night. They'll be. Hopeful tomorrow night, but there's a good chance they didn't do enough. No. Unfortunately, the you know when when the bottom half of your league you know really isn't that strong, then that really brings you down, and that's what hurt I think ODU and uh, Louisiana Louisiana Tech to be very honest with you, because they're I mean they're going to be as good they're as good as a lot of teams that are going to be in the tournament. So we wind down near a half minute in this final. And they get a foul to get several subs to check into the game. And this crowd will salute Jared Haas and the starters as they leave the floor. Big hug over there by the big guy. A lot of love in the house. You know, it's great to see coach have an opportunity to be able to congratulate these young players and the little point guy is the last guy and uh, he might be the most important one to be honest with you. Will Norton. And of course if you follow college athletics at all you know about what the UAB athletic department has gone through over the last year dropping the football program. It's been such a rocky ride for this athletic program over the last year with Ray Watts, university president, making the decision to drop the program in December. He hasn't made an appearance at least through yesterday here at the conference tournament. And it has not been the most pleasant of times in this athletic program. So this run that this basketball team has made somewhat galvanizing this UAB fan base, this Birmingham community, they surround the program, hosting the tournament. They'll rip off three wins in three days to win the tourney. <laughs> I'm looking at that foul. I'm saying, now why? Why would you? Why would you follow him there? Get him the scores column. I don't get know. Him, get well, first of all, they should do. No, they should. Hey, listen. If they take another shot, that guy, I, I'd have him run suicides tomorrow. To be honest with you, this game is over. Let's get. You know, no foul him to get the ball back. Okay. First time UAB 
has been to a conference tournament final since 04. One of the charter members of Conference USA. 20 seasons in the conference, 20 trips to the tournament. But this will be their first Conference USA tournament win. The clock runs down, and that will do it from Birmingham. UAB's headed back to the big dance. So Jared Haas, who made 12 NCAA tournament trips as an assistant under Roy Williams at Kansas and in North Carolina, now makes his first as a head coach. First trip to the dance since 2011 when UAB went as an at-large. The first time they've won a conference tournament title since the 80s. And they won several as a member of the Sun Belt. Won four tournament titles in the Sun Belt. But their first is Conference USA's champion comes in their 20th season of the conference. And it comes in front of their home crowd. And Jared Haskin finally smile. Had that 16-point lead that disappeared against the regular season champion Louisiana Tech yesterday. Had to go to overtime. Very first person that started to pump up the crowd after they blew that lead and went into overtime yesterday was Coach Haas. Said he saw a look in their eyes during that break leading hey. into the overtime. He knew they'd be fine. They outscored Tech 14-4 in the overtime session and then straight dominated Middle Tennessee today. They shoot 64% during the second half, above 50% for the game. And beat Middle Tennessee 73-60. Let's go to Mike Jarvis, who's with the winning coach, Jared Hass. So, Coach, are we ready to go? All right, Coach, uh, how, just tell me, what, what does this feel like for you? It's unbelievable, and it's uh, there's been so much hard work. The guys had every chance this year to give in, and we never did. Um, I've been lucky enough to be a part of teams that have gone to the NCAA tournament. They have not, and I told them all year it's a special, special thing that I would do just about anything to help them get that feeling, and to see it right now is pretty cool. Where do you watch Selection Sunday, Coach? I haven't decided yet. I don't know if it's going to be in my basement. I don't know if we're going to go to a restaurant. It's a great problem to have to figure out. Well, listen, thank you. Congratulations. Love your team. Good luck in the tournament. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, I don't think he had to think much about where they'd watch Selection Sunday coming into this week as the four seed. Where they take down fifth seeded Western Kentucky on Thursday in the quarters. They take down the top seed Louisiana Tech in a thriller in the semis last night. And then they beat the sixth seed Middle Tennessee in the final today. 73-60 the final score. Congratulations to UAB, the 2015 Conference USA champions headed to the big dance. They'll see where on Selection Sunday tomorrow. Now we take it to Miami. The FIA Formula E Championship is next.